Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the last installment in our Chanel Tweed Week. As you may know, I picked up the entire collection last week, I believe, and I have slowly been going through each palette. Every video is dedicated to one palette, two makeup tutorials, lots of swatches and comparisons. And today for our final installment, we will be discussing number four, Tweed Brun et Rose. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As you may know, I have my online beauty consulting service. This is a one-on-one -on -one video chat with me. You get the chance to talk to me about any makeup concern you have, and you get my undivided attention instead of sharing me here on YouTube with thousands of other people. So to make your appointment with me, go ahead and click the link in the description box down below. Okay, so number four, Brun et Rose. Let's go ahead and look at this baby, take some swatches and just examine it for a second. Okay, so as we can see here, we have, oh, sorry, just please ignore the chipped nail polish here. This happened right before I started filming. Anyway, as we can see, we have different textures. This one here on the bottom, this pink one, is, it feels a bit more like a topper. Like the texture is, it's not gritty, but it feels grittier compared to the other two. Like these ones here all feel very creamy, very buttery, very smooth. This one hits like a very soft velvet matte. It's not a powdery hard matte, it's a soft velvet. And then these two here feel and look like a very soft satin. It is going to be more subtle, more demure. It's not a chunky glitter. It's going to be more subtle than this pink one here. And I think that this color story is going to be very appealing to a lot of the classic Chanel clients who like color, but want something subtle and want something a little bit less intense. It makes me think of a little bit of the number two Tweed Pulp that we talked about earlier this week. However, Tweed Pulp is just, it's more subtle in opacity and execution. This one here is a very subtle purple palette. I think if you enjoy more subtle looks, you're going to enjoy this number four palette here. So let's go ahead, let's dive in to look number one with Brun et Rose. At first I wasn't certain about getting this palette because the color story to me seemed very, I want to say basic, but sometimes basic is good because sometimes a palette that looks not super thrilling is actually incredibly flattering on the eyes. So to start off with, I'm going in with a little sponge dip applicator that came with the palette and I'm dipping into this shadow here. I'm just going to gently pat this all over the lid here. This color is very opaque and as you can see, it's not matte, but it's also a little bit satiny, but in a very subtle way. It isn't your chunky glitter. It isn't going to give you glitter particles. This palette looks like a really beautiful balance of neutrals. Like if you are a neutral eyeshadow queen, I think you may be vulnerable to number four, brun et rose. Brun et rose just means brown and pink or brown and rose. So the name indicates uh, neutrals with a pink in it, which is what the swatches look like. Now I'm just going in with a big fluffy brush. This is the Chanel double-ended brush here. All the brushes are listed down below. I'm just blending this out very nicely. I would say that this looks very neutral. It's a brown, maybe a hint of warm to it, but this is really the neutral underdog palette of the Tweed series. I'm just adding a bit of chapstick. This is the number one series, the Lip and Cheek Balm, and this is a number two healthy pink. It's a lip tint. It can also be a blush, but it's also a very moisturizing. 
Now going into another dual ended retractable brush from Chanel, going into this more pointed side, but there's two sides. This one here is like the pencil brush and this one's a bit fluffier. So now I'm going to go into the darkest color in the palette here. And I'm just going to focus this on the outer corner very gently. And I'm going to try to rein in my extra jean, which always likes to blow things out and make them very dark and dramatic, but I'm trying to show some versatility here, which is very difficult. We all have our habits. This is blending really nicely. This is definitely darker than our first shade that we used. So I would go in gently because it's always easier to add eyeshadow than it is to remove, but I think that these are blending together very nicely and very easily. Okay, so using the opposite side of my sponge tip applicator, I am going into this color here. And I'm going to place it on this part of the eye. This is really brightening up the eye here. It's a little bit lighter. And you can definitely go ahead and layer the colors together like this because this palette is just very neutral and very like user friendly. So I don't think you're going to go wrong by mixing any of these shadows together. Okay, so against my better extra instinct, I'm going to leave this eye like this because I just wanna show you how simple, how easy this looks and like just how subtle and natural it can be. Now let's move on to the other eye. I'm gonna go a little bit darker and more dramatic. So going back into our dark color here and using this side of the dual ended brush, this side here is more just like the classic eyeshadow shape. And this is going to go all over the lid here. I'm noticing a slight amount of fallout. I think this palette has the least amount of fallout compared to the other palettes that I've used. And I only notice it with the darkest color, which makes sense, that's not rocket science, but just a tiny bit. And for this Tweed series, I've been doing my face base off camera before, and I think that's why I'm noticing the fallout more, just because typically I do my eyes first, and so fallout isn't really something that I notice too much. So I cleaned off my brush here, the big fluffy side, and I'm going into this color here, and this is gonna go into the crease. Now going into my more pencil side of the double-ended brush, going into the dark color here, and I'm just going to sweep it under the lashes here. For this eye look, I really just think a classic black eyeliner and a classic black mascara is going to do the trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just added a little bit of blush. I went into my new blush number 68, Rose Ecrin. It's just like a really nice, soft, subtle little blush. It's kind of a universal color. It's very easy to use with a lot of different looks. So I think it's just very nice with both eye looks. And then for the lips, I went into my new Rouge Allure 198. This is 198 Nuance. Nuance. It's just one of those like beautiful, neutral 90s lip colors and I think it just balances both eyeshadow looks. I am going to go ahead and add this last little pinky rosy light color here with another sponge tip applicator. This one is definitely more of a topper shade and I'm doing this after concealer and everything because I just find that if I apply this before concealer and all that jazz, it kind of loses its oomph. So I'm just going to place some here. And this one here, the texture is very different. This one definitely is more sparkly, more of a topper. And if you want to just tone it down, just press your finger on top of the shadow just to make it less intense. And this way you just add a bit of brightness to it. I think if you want to use this more topper shade, you can go ahead and sweep it with 
a sponge tip because sponges are great for transferring color not for blending but if you wanted to apply more just like apply more and then just press it onto the lid just to make it a little bit less volatile and sparkly so let's go ahead and do a vote which look do you prefer look number one or look number two i have to say that this palette here like i stated earlier maybe doesn't look extravagant or extraordinary in the palette like the colors look you know very classic very neutral but on the eyes just so flattering so pretty like your eyes just look pretty very easy to use very very user friendly if you're the type of person who is intimidated by like orange and super dark colors and reds and like you know if you want something more subtle more easy to use number four is for you because i mean look at this look this is so pretty so perfect i can't think of any occasion where this would be inappropriate or too much it's really lovely so now let's go ahead and do some swatch comparisons the first i mean okay so i have a few palettes but the first one that i thought of like that is tom ford nude dip when i saw the pink i thought tom ford nude dip this is the tom ford palette here in question this one here i believe has only satin there's no matte in here but when i saw the tweed color story i was like wow these just look like cousins from a different neighborhood let's go ahead and swatch tom ford underneath what's interesting is tom ford to me looks more cool tone in general like this taupey silver is more cool and the brown looks different like this brown looks warmer more chocolatey whereas this is a little bit more gray this is the pink here they're close i wouldn't say that these are dupes the texture is completely different this is a topper shade this is um more of the same buttery creamy satin finish if you like nude dip you will like this one here but the color story is a little bit different it's not an, a perfect dupe next up i have one from chanel this is the mediterranean palette that came out in january of this year for the spring release i'm going to go ahead and swatch this underneath tom ford the darkest color in the mediterranean palette definitely pulls more of a khaki especially when it's compared up here this one here is more matte and more chocolatey uh, i would say that the neutrals from uh, the tweed they're more subtle like this one here these are more subtle they're not as like sparkly and intense if you like a neutral because i know a lot of people do if you liked this mediterranean i think you'll like tweed better because it's just more subtle like there's less sparkle to it next up is another chanel this is lumiere et opulence this is a holiday palette from a couple years ago i think 2019 actually yes it was 2019 because it was uh, my trip to paris in uh, i think november or october of 2019 that i picked this up in paris so i'm gonna go ahead and swatch this one too i think only the pink might be sort of close this is clearly a very different color story this definitely pulls deeper more khaki more bronzed i hope this is all in frame it's hard to tell exactly but this color story it was really more just the pink and a little bit of the neutral that i thought possibly could be close to tweed but i really don't see it i really don't think it's there um it's just kind of just like to swatch for swatches sake but i do have one palette here that is um contour et experience because it has some lovely neutral matte browns that i want to swatch and i'm going to swatch them right next to this dark one here so this is contour et experience it's my favorite palette from the brand um i basically just ignore the red shadow and i go into the neutrals so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, swatch the three over here next to this one next to this dark color i would say that the darkest color from condor experience is quite close to tweed however tweed has a soft velvet satiny matte whereas condor experience is more of a flat matte so 
there's a little bit less reflection, but I can see why I'm enjoying the tweeds so much because Condor Experience has been one of my favorites for a very long time. So I can see why I like this tweed brun et rose, this brown and rose palette. It's very lovely. Did they reinvent the wheel with this color story? No, I have some similar color stories here. Did I get it anyway? Of course I did. It's a tweed. It's beautiful. The packaging, the embossing, the little tweed sleeve sold me. Nothing about this color story is earth shattering and groundbreaking, but that also means that it's extremely easy to use. It's going to be very versatile. You can do this. You could even go lighter if you wanted to be even more subtle. You could do a bit darker and more dramatic. This is a palette that's going to be a no brainer a workhorse, if you will, the type of palette that you're just going to keep on hand and use and reuse like Monday morning when you're running out the door and you want to look put together. You don't want to uh, rifle through all of your drawers to look for something. This is the type of palette you could use for any type of professional workplace. It's always going to look very appropriate and very put together. I think it's beautiful. Do you need this palette? Listen, I don't know. You are a grown woman, you know your collection, you know your budget. I personally am very happy to own all four tweeds. Is every single one the most unique? I mean, there's one that's quite unique in my opinion. Number three, Tweed Fauve. This one here, I find this color story to be unique. I don't have color stories quite like this. This peach with purple combination isn't really something that I see or have very much of, but I have all four. I'm very happy with all four. I have to say that this palette is the one that I am the most surprised by how much I enjoy it because I just kind of forgot how nice it is to use neutrals and how pretty they are. And I feel like I'm just repeating myself here, so maybe I should end the video. But let me know what you've thought of this whole Chanel tweed series. Has it been helpful? Have you enjoyed the tutorials? Which palettes do you want to see reused in the future? Which ones do you want me to use again? And are there, are there specific makeup looks you want me to create? Leave a comment down below. If you're new to my channel, I hope you take the time to subscribe. We talk about a lot of luxury beauty, a lot of Chanel. So take the time to subscribe and make sure your notifications are on because that way you get notified when I post a video. And on that note, I think that's all I have for you guys for today. So thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.